move on. But that piece that I talked about, the money laundering one, was eye-opening. Okay, Jesse, I think it's interesting because the president went out of his way to make these statements as like he has past knowledge, information, experience, where he had uh, problems with Bannon, et cetera, and believed some of these things to be occurring in the past when he was there, right? But I know that they still were in communication once Steve Bannon left the White sure. House. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't say, I didn't even know Steve Bannon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, the story is either fake news or if it's real, but either way it helps the president because if it's fake, the media shot itself in the foot. And if it's real, then Bannon's weakened and there's going to be no more Roy Moores. I read the first couple paragraphs. There's three big lies. Trump didn't want to win. Melania cried when Trump win and Kellyanne Conway didn't think they were going to win. I know those are all lies. And then you have Bannon saying that this whole meeting at Trump Tower was treasonous. Mm -hmm. And then in 60 Minutes, two months ago, he said the collusion thing was a farce. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to think. This guy, Wolf, has a terrible reputation in his own industry. Uh, people say he's a gun for hire. Uh, there is a uh, complaint that I think the last book, 12 people came forward and said, all of the quotes attributed to me were completely manufactured. Well, he talks to quite a few people. Yeah, he talks to a lot of people, but he's got a reputation for inventing things out of thin air. With that said, if this stuff is true, and Steve Bannon said the President of the United States' son is a traitor and is weak and could crack, and his son-in-law is sleazy, then not only is that incredibly disloyal, it's stupid. And Trump values loyalty almost above being everything. Being a team player. Be being a team yeah. player. And this was something the Mooch actually previewed when he said what he said, uh, supposedly off the record. And so if this is true, he has no credibility now going into the primaries, which I think is going to be good because no one's going to want to give him money. So that could actually help the right. president. He doesn't have to deal with any of that primary stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I take know. it at a very personal level. I think that Dana, in terms of the legislative prospects, very astutely and professionally laid out the impact. I think it will be a positive impact, the fact that Bannon is now in exile. But et tu brute, you talk about treason. Who, who is the traitor here? Yep. Steve Bannon is the traitor, the scum. How dare he? How dare he? I mean, what he did to Donald Trump Jr., I mean, that, that, that's one thing. I, I think that the best defense uh, for Donald Trump Jr. in that infamous meeting at the White House, uh, not being nefarious, is that he was so naive, there was no lawyer there, sure. so inexperienced, he was so over-eager, over-enthusiastic. To me, that's his best defense for Do Donald Jr., that he didn't intend uh, to, uh, to collude with Russians uh, in any way that was illegal anyway. He wanted to get whatever information he could get. Uh, who wouldn't take that meeting, he was thinking, in those days? Do you believe he said new. these things? I, I, I think, but to me, the worst thing mm -hmm. that Steve Bannon did in this whole episode is to suggest very strongly that Donald Trump Jr., is sitting in that Trump Tower a couple of blocks from here, surrounded by these, these commies. And then after the meeting, uh, Steve Bannon Jr. says there is zero possibility he didn't take these Russians upstairs to meet his father. Mm. The Washington Post, the New York Times, every investigative reporter in this nation has been striving to connect Donald there. Trump yeah with that meeting with the Russians and has failed to do so. So now here is Steve Bannon suggesting you could take it to the bank, zero possibility it did not happen. To me, that is the, and this is the guy who was his best friend for at least those few months. Well, and chief strategist really and uh, coming on board. So yeah, that's why when Jesse, when you mentioned that, saying that it's disconcerting because somebody was supposed to be on the same team, uh, you know, with the president, very loyal. Um, advising him, trying to transform, you know, American politics and the forgotten men and women across the country. Uh, you don't do it by making these kind of very strong statements and, and taking a swipe and trying to uh, take out the president's son and the family and essentially the president himself. And he's given the left and the media a weapon to then hurt the president with because a lot of these same people have said for a whole year that the Steve Bannon is this horrible person. He's this racist. He's this propagandist. And now they're taking him for what he said and using, now all of a sudden he's a truth teller. Mm -hmm. And they're using this against the president to hurt them. And, you know, it's just sad. The whole thing's sad. Yeah, right. And it didn't need to happen. What, one quick point. Greg suggests that President Trump did this on a lark. I've known him a long time. He started telling me he was going to be president of the United States in 1998, 1999, 2000. He was going to run as a Reform yes. Party candidate. Do you have that on uh, he wanted to be president more than he wanted to make money. Okay. Yeah, but I think, I mean, I 
believe that he had doubts the way everybody had doubts when, when and to, to, no, towards the end. So I buy into the idea that everybody was surprised. As for Bannon, I believe he hated the family because the family provided insulation from Bannon. Those were the only people that were in his way because I think Bannon saw Trump as a vessel for his own disruptive principles and, and agenda. He wanted to disrupt. He, Bannon... Because well, he didn't is, like the other the globalist tendencies. Yeah, but he was honestly, the what, well, no, Bannon people. is a radical. He's a radical. He wants to disrupt. He doesn't have mild opinions. Every opinion is the extreme opinion. So, you know, look, Ivanka despise, would despise somebody like Roy Moore who embraced Roy Moore, Bannon. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. And that's what you're seeing. And she could run circles around him intellectually. So mm -hmm. please. All right, we're going to see where this goes from here. Let's see. Check your uh, Twitter accounts ahead. <laughs> that